I'm Josh, this is Colin, and this is Perseverance, our floating off-grid home. Come explore with us as we sail to new places, we learn how to protect our environment, and see how we coexist with nature. We'll also make lots of friends along the way. It is hardtop delivery day. It has been storming all night. We kept waking up fearing the solar panels or the Bimini hardware we have on deck would not stay put and uh, it all did. And now we get hopefully a drier sunrise. There is so much water in the dinghy. Oh, the solar panel's got a nice bath. Boat still looks so naked, but hopefully we'll be able to get on this dock in just a few hours, and maybe we'll be done with the rain. There's bits of Dodger from last night. Come on, you're ridiculous. Good morning. Does it look good? It looks good. I don't think anything moved up there. The sunrise, the sunrise is pretty. I'm going back to bed then. Everything's no. in control. You've got it. It's installed a hard top day. It's hard top day. It's like Christmas. Yeah. It is Christmas in like a week. So <laughs> this is our Christmas. It's All right. Christmas. I'm making coffee. We are starting up the boat. We're going to go move and hop on the city dock. We checked the depth with the dinghy anchor and looks like it's plenty deep, about 10 feet dockside for us. So let's get going. All right, we're on the docks. We had to go around the first time because the current and wind was just too strong. So we came back around uh, with a little bit of a shallower approach angle, which worked out pretty good. And just slowly pulled the boat in uh, from the stern. So our hardtop should be here in 10 minutes. <laughs> so excited. Then our friends, Tristan and John, uh, are going to dinging up. They're still in the anchorage from yesterday. And they're gonna help us assemble and then set this hardtop on the boat. Yes. It's gonna be amazing. There's Perseverance, and the hardtop has just arrived. Josh is running up there to meet the driver. Wow, there it is. It's good on the front side too, I don't see any rock marks. Is this the front? Or... I think it's the back, yeah. Tapers to the front. And there's our aluminum legs. All right, first time seeing it. The reveal. Reveal. Would not have been possible without John and Tristan. <laughs> I really. So one error thus far. There are no holes for the aft stays. That was definitely part of the design. This is great. All right, the top is sitting. This is amazing. It is even better than I imagined. The view is superb. Thank you so much, John and Tristan. We could not have done this without you. Yeah, I mean, it would have been hired help situation. One of the more ridiculous ways to get water. I'm exhausted from this hard job situation. We learned from a fellow cruiser, they sell fire hydrant adapter 
uh, fittings on Amazon for like 20 bucks. I mean, it's probably not technically legal, but it's fresh water. Yeah. All right, so we spent the past hour or so just kind of going back and forth with like how tall the hardtop should be, how much of an angle it should be at. And I think we've decided being able to walk under the lowest point without hitting your head if you were 6'3". So for the four legs, we have to drill and then tap, which means thread the mounting brackets onto this piece here. And so we've never done that before. And so we're gonna practice on the scrap piece of aluminum before we do it to the hard top. And we don't have the right drill bit size, but we're gonna try a 50% thread tap and let that be okay for now, possibly. We'll see how it works on this aluminum bar and in the future we might just do a bolt and a nut rather than have it be tapped at all, so. Or we might be Ubering to get <laughs> the proper drill bit. We'll see who wins. <laughs> all right, we're going to Home Depot. We need new drill bits. There's not really anything one of us can do on the boat right now, so. And I think we both need to get away from the boat, so. Yeah, it's got to Oh, you know breaks. what I don't have? What does he not have? My mask. Oh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Good timing, driver will be here in one minute, okay. and he's gonna take the water route. Um, Maybe he's driving one of those amphibious ducks. So I came around the corner and Colin's like, I can't see any small metal anywhere in this whole store. I wasn't standing right here, I was sitting <laughs> over there. But I just happened to be gazing in this direction and then like, I actually realized what I was looking at. Exactly what we were looking for. So slight snafu. The, this winch is a little bit further back than this winch. And what that means is the winch handle clearance is different between the winch and the legs. And so we've moved this the whole hardtop back far enough that the winch handle clears on this one. However, right where the leg sits is there's bulkhead underneath. And so we wouldn't be able to get the backing plate on. So yeah. After measuring for a very long time, we decided as long as the blue winch handle could clear the aft leg, we could make it work. So we are going to butyl tape all of this just so it's probably gonna rain at some point. So just until we get the right hardware, because we don't have the right hardware, we're just gonna butyl tape so that it doesn't rain and get inside the deck. Eventually we're gonna, what are we gonna use? I think that will be the best option. So we just got two of the bolts in right now. Not even the right bolts. Not even the right bolts because we did not realize we needed to purchase those bolts. <laughs> um, so we're using the bolts that uh, we did know we need, needed to purchase. And uh, we're using those temporarily to secure each leg so they can't move around. And then we've tied this dock line tight to the cleat as best we can on each side to just hold it down. And uh, the, two, the two bolts that are in are gonna prevent the plate from moving any. And that's gonna allow us to keep the hard top in position and aligned while we start working on the forward legs, which we have to determine the length. We've got to cut, we've got to tap the mounting plates to go up here. Um, so just now having the hard top at least anchored in some location, we have a reference for everything now. Because um, trying to determine what is straight and level on a boat, levels don't work and even like uh, squares don't work because all of the lines and curves, um, even though it looks symmetrical, we've determined our boat's not even symmetrical <laughs> from left to right. Um, the winches, the, the, winches, the stanchions, like things you think in your eye, your mind tricks you to say, no, they're lined up. No, they're not lined up. So it's a, it's a challenge to find what is the truly straight and level. 
All right, we are now at the point of drilling for future tapping. Future being right after we finish drilling the uh, holes for the forward supports. All right, almost through. First four were easy, you should have recorded those. Oh my gosh. All right, that should be the last one. All right, that's five down. And then five to go. And then we gotta tap them. So we were pretty scared of uh, tapping because all we knew or were told is that it involved making threads and it involved tapping fluid and it sounded scary and like something we were gonna really mess up. But the, uh, the lesson learned is don't be shy, tap and die. All right, it is just after 10, I think. Oh no, it's 10.45. So it is 10.45, it has started to rain. Looks like it should be short-lived. We're gonna try and finish these forward pulls and then go to bed. And we are quite tired. All right, so this is awesome. We've got the forward legs in. They're not fully installed, but they've got a couple bolts in and they've got pressure on them. We've got lines going forward to hold them down, hold the top down in case wind picks up. But this is the first time seeing what this is gonna look like fully installed. It's pretty wonderful. And it looks wonderful. It looks really good. Josh is just wrapping up the Final butyl. butyl. And I'm ready to go to bed. Yeah. Shower bed. Showers in bed. We have to go hardware shopping tomorrow to get the final the final pieces, but that'll be easy compared to what we've been doing the past 48 hours. Here's the quick shot of the hard top. Did you get any during the day at all? No. All right. We finished at 12.30 last night. Got up at, what, 8? Something like that this morning. Yeah. Now we're going to have some breakfast and enjoy some break time and uh, get some hardware that did not come Tumble, tumble blanket. Tumble blanket. Here comes the wind. <laughs> I will say that dumpster on the public dock is pretty amazing because that never exists. It's yeah, pretty that's awesome. Pretty legit. Yeah. We need 20 or 12 After we had breakfast, Colin went into town for the day to complete some errands that we needed to get done, like laundry and I went back to the boat to finish tapping the aft and forward legs so they would be ready for their final install onto the deck. All right, so we are going to hop off the dock here in West Palm. Go work on finishing the hard top install at anchor. The wind is currently pushing us onto the dock. We have a boat both behind us and a boat in front of us. And so we're going to use a spring line technique since we do not have a bow thruster and the idea is we're going to pivot the boat in towards the dock utilizing this spring line and i'm going to be up here with a fender to protect the bow and we're going to let the stern of the boat swing out and then once we have a good clear departure angle josh will then back us out and the stern will just back out that way and once we're clear we'll turn around and uh go anchor let's see how it goes All right, so we are back at anchor and we are now just marking the holes. So for the past week, we've secured the hard top with just two bolts in each leg. And so, um, no and no nuts, just tying them down with dock lines. And so now we are uh, marking the other holes. We're going to move the hard top forward just about four inches, uh, drill and fill with epoxy the holes. And then once that cures overnight, we will re-drill into the epoxy, but smaller. And the reason for that is that epoxy is going to protect the boat. So if there is any leaking, it's just gonna be between the screw and the epoxy and it just comes inside and it doesn't actually work its way into the coring of the deck. 
actual rod um, eventually. Which would eventually cause rod issues, so. Plus our, what are we putting in Dow as well after that? Right, so after the epoxy cure, we're gonna use Dow 795 as the sealant, and that will create the, um, the, final. the final seal. All right, so using an old cheap poncho that was used once and already ripped, uh, we are creating a tent of sorts around where we are going to cut the access panel. Uh, for now, we're just gonna cut a uh, opening in the liner just big enough to uh, access what we need to access. And later we're going to try and build a nice cover plate to go over it. The uh, tenting is just gonna help keep all the debris contained, dropping straight down where we can vacuum it up and not all over the galley. Might even be able to catch some of it in here. See if we can still work with it like this. So tenting and ponding. Ponding. Pondering. So we've come to the realization that the blade that came with our rigid tool is for softer wood and that fiberglass, this cabin liner is much harder than that. So it's dulling the blade very quickly, getting very hot, and uh, I think we're uh, kind of stuck where we are until tomorrow. We can go to Home Depot and get a uh, metal cutting blade. Yeah. So uh, we're probably gonna call it quits for tonight and start again tomorrow. That's how it goes. Yeah. So the metal cutting blade was far better than the wood cutting blade. And Josh had that cut in about a minute flat. And there also was no burning. So having the right tool for the job really makes a difference. We went biking this morning to Home Depot. It was a nice, lovely bike ride. Yeah, much less burning. No burning, actually. So now we just need to cut an access hole here, same as that one. And then for the aft leg uh, of the hardtop up in the aft cabin, that's gonna be the tricky one. And then the one in the garage is already open. There's no cabin liner, so that one's already good to go. So it's kind of like we're halfway there. So for the last couple hours, we've been debutiling the feet. And these are actually the feet from the front of the hardtop. And we've got the epoxy sanded flat. And now we're going to redrill the quarter inch holes that the bolts will actually go to. And then we're going to be sealing these with Dow. Uh, with their five through bolts each for the aft two legs. And then we'll be mounting the hardtop in the back, take the feet that are currently supporting it, clean them, and then do the same thing up front. And this hardtop will finally be mounted. It's gonna be great, and it's gonna go well, and it's not gonna be crazy, and that's my prediction. After putting a little bit of dow under each foot, okay, a lot of dow under each foot, we were finally nearing the end of our hardtop install. This hardtop install took us about a week to accomplish. We were also recording during that entire time, and our patrons definitely make that hard work worth it. You really inspire us to make new and better content. We hope this video was both entertaining and informative, and if you have any further questions about this hardtop install, hit us up in the comments below. It is 2 a.m., but the hardtop is done, so Safety lines are coming off, and it's standing on its own legs. Okay, bedtime. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It really helps our channel grow. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon.